Welcome everyone to the amazing world of ants. On this channel, we continue to discover how epic the lives of these small insects truly are. The ant world is full of wonder, terror, adventure, kindness, and surprise. With over 600,000 subscribers now and counting, composed of you new and old AC family members, it is evident that ant love has and continues to swell to global proportions. And so, with it being Love Month and just a few more days to Valentine's Day, here on the Ants Canada channel, we wanted to feature the lives of an ant which we have gotten so many requests to cover. With their huge swollen gasters full of food, these ants by far are among the most peculiar, interesting, and loved ants in the entire world. You won't want to miss all the sweet discovery ahead, so keep watching until the end, where we also announce our annual ant love contest, where we give away a full ant setup. Are sweets the way into a lady's heart? Well, perhaps in this case, yes. Welcome everyone to the marvelous world of honeypot ants, here on the Ants Canada Ant Channel. Please subscribe to my channel and hit the bell icon. Welcome to the AC family. Enjoy. If you haven't seen them yet, these ants are the famous honeypot ants, native to Western United States and Mexico. Indigenous people of these areas have eaten these honeypot ants for centuries. Could you imagine popping one of these juice-filled ants into your mouth? So what do these balloon-looking ants do anyway? What are they for? In honeypot ant colonies, some workers become what are called repletes living storage receptacles that get fed so much food they completely balloon up and do nothing but hang from the walls and ceiling of their nest. Though they're called honeypot ants, those gasters do not contain any bee honey. The fluid inside these honeypot ants consists rather of simple sugars, unmodified from their original state, usually nectar from flowering plants, exudates from galls, and the secretions of aphids and other plant insects. In this particular video, however, these ants appear green because they have been fed sugar water with green dye. This particular colony of honeypot ants of the species Myrmecocystis mexicanus belongs to a friend of mine named Drew, one of our gan farmers in LA, California. He houses this awesome honeypot ant colony in a simple plastic dirt container, with a smaller dirt container placed inside forming a one centimeter space between the containers for the ants to dig and then peat moss placed inside the smaller container to make it look like a natural wall. Don't the ants look beautiful? Wow! There you will see the queen, who is larger than all her workers and does not do any replete work. She's normal shaped, just larger. Here you will see ordinary workers tending to the brood, making sure they're all well fed and cared for. Here are the pupae, the cocoons, and you want to hear something pretty crazy? You might have noticed that each cocoon here has a green dot. Usually these dots are black in the wild. The black dot on ant cocoons are called the meconium, the fecal pellet. So get this, when ants are larvae, their baby stage, they eat and eat and eat and continue to grow, however they never poop. Everything remains inside them, up until right before they pupate to become these cocoons. When they spin the cocoons, the final step is to poop out this meconium, meaning all the food waste they built up during the course of their entire larval stage. It therefore appears on every cocoon as a tiny dot. That's why the meconia on these cocoons are green, because they were fed green sugar water growing up. It made their meconia green. Isn't that amazing, guys? Imagine having a baby and it only pooping once in its entire life, right before teenagehood. And get this. What is even more fascinating is that this meconium is expelled inside the cocoon and this lifestyle is perfect for them because pooping only once and inside the cocoon means their entire colony can remain as sterile and clean as possible, which is super important in an underground community of animals where it is moist. You see, in these environments, bacteria, fungi and disease can thrive so the cleaner the ants can be, the better. Less poop around means a cleaner home. This also applies to the repletes. Having repletes means that you don't have to have food laying around and getting moldy, which can endanger a colony. All food gets stored inside the repletes bodies and anytime a member of the colony needs to eat, they simply touch mouths. 
a process called trophallaxis, and the replete regurgitates some of its yummy contents. Ants don't need fridges. They have it all figured out. Honeypot ants are from arid regions where they experience long periods of drought and lack of food and water resources, which is why evolution has formed these ants into these perfect storage units. According to myrmecologists, nectar and honeydew are not the only fluids which these ants store. Apparently, there are also workers that are called aquapletes, which store water. And even a third type of replete that has been thought to contain body fluids of insect prey. So where can one find these ants? Luckily, they are native to U.S. states like California, so if you're from there, you're in luck. You can find the queen alates from late winter to late summer in open dirt areas in the desert, foothills, and even arid mountain habitats. In most, if not all, species of honeypot ants, mating flights occur following light rain. The favored time seems to be late afternoon or early evening. In arid habitats with their unpredictable rainfall, the honeypot alates wait until suitable rainfall occurs, and once it does, the males and females swarm from the nests and fly forth. Good luck to those of you who plan to look for these queens this year. There is also another type of ant called the false honeypot ant, Pernelopis imperus which also have repletes, but they aren't as pronounced as the Myrmecocystis. Still really cool though. The good news about these false honeypot ants is that they are found throughout North America and actually have their mating flights soon, within a few weeks. They're also called winter ants because they fly so early in the year in North America, sometimes when there's still frost on the ground. So keep your eye open for them soon. Australia also have ants that are commonly called honeypot ants, and they belong to a completely different genus, Campanotis, the genus of carpenter ants. You can find these ants in arid regions. Drew keeps these honeypot ants in media that is relatively dry, but moistens it periodically and feeds them a diet of both protein through insects and sweet liquids like sugar water. They can also be kept in a dirtless setup, as seen here. It is amazing how specialized and perfectly tailored their evolutionary design can be in order to deal with living in places that they exist. These ants are so well loved by ant enthusiasts around the world, and I am happy to have presented them to you for our Valentine's Day episode. I wish you and your loved ones a happy Valentine's Day, and thank you for watching. It's Ant Love Forever. AC family, what do you think of these honeypot ants, huh? Are they cool or what? Of course, for you Inner Colony members, I've placed a hidden cookie for you here if you would just like to watch these honeypot ants doing their thing along to some relaxing music. And it's time for the AC question of the week. Last week, we asked, name two life stages between which the doodle-nymph stage occurs in the astigmatid mites found living among our golden empire. Congratulations to DM Salma who correctly answered the doodle-nymph stage is between the proto-nymph and the trito-nymph stage. Congratulations, DM Salma. You won a $25 gift card to our shop. And for this week's AC Question of the Week, we ask, what is the name of the specialized workers in honeypot ants that store water? Leave your answer in the comment section and you could win an ebook handbook from our shop. And now it's time for an announcement. Every year in February, we at AntsCanada.com hold a fun ant love contest to celebrate the love of ants, also partly celebratory of the birthday month of AntsCanada.com. So this year, we are giving away a free all-you-need Omni gear pack containing all you need at every stage of ant keeping. From the moment you catch a queen to the point when your colony is two to three years old and huge. Here's how to win. This year, we're holding our ant love contest over on our official Facebook page. I've placed a link to our Facebook page in the description box. First, like our Facebook page, and then look for the Ant Love Contest post with this video pinned to the top of the page. And in the comment section of that post, tell us, what is Ant Love to you? We will choose one lucky winner to win the All You Need Omni Gear Pack and make the announcement in next week's video. So go ahead, take part in our Ant Love Contest. Go over to our Facebook page and give it a shot. Remember, we give extra points for creativity and often give out honorary prizes for runners-up. Good luck, AC family, and we'll see you next week. It's Ant Love Forever.